Good day everyone. We will discuss about how availability group automatic failover works in this video. Let's get started. Consider we have three database servers JBS AG1, JBS AG2 and JBS AG3. Let's consider JBS AG1 and JBS AG2 is on the primary data center and JBS AG3 is on the secondary data center. Now, as far as the availability group is concerned, all these three database servers are part of the same availability group, wherein JBS AG1 and JBS AG2 is configured as a uh, synchronous replica with a uh, synchronous commit, and JBS AG3 is uh, configured as an asynchronous replica, and it has the uh, asynchronous commit. Now let's consider JBS AG1, which is your current primary replica, has some issues maybe like uh, uh, the health check detects failure on this particular primary replica and uh, this uh, kind of causes an automatic failover so if the server instance jbs ag1 that is hosting the current primary replica is still running it changes the state of the primary databases to disconnected and disconnects all the clients if any log records are waiting in the recovery queue on the target secondary replica, JBS AG2, the secondary replica applies the remaining log records to finish rolling forward the secondary databases. The former secondary replica transitions to the primary role. So that is the JBS AG2, which is the former secondary replica, will be transition, transitioning to a primary role in an event of an automatic failover. Its databases becomes the primary databases. The new primary replica rolls back any uncommitted transactions as quickly as possible. Logs isolate these uncommitted transactions, allowing rollback to occur in the background while client uses the database. This process does not roll back any committed transactions. Until a given secondary database is connected, it is briefly marked as not synchronized. Before the rollback recovery starts, secondary databases can connect to the new primary database and quickly transition to the synchronized state. So for example, uh, uh, right now, JBS AG2 is your new primary. So the healthy uh, secondary uh, replica, which is your JBS AG3, as soon as JBS AG2 becomes the new primary, can connect to JBS AG2 and then uh, get the required changes from the new primary. The best case is usually for a third synchronous commit replica that remains in the secondary role after the failover. Later, when the server instance that is hosting the former primary replica restarts or becomes online, it recognizes that the another availability replica, that is JBS AG2, now owns the primary role. The former primary replica, JBS AG1, transitions to the secondary role and its databases become secondary databases. The new secondary replica, JBS AG1, connects to the current primary replica and catches its databases up to the current primary database as quickly as possible. As soon as the new secondary replica has resynchronized its databases, failover is again possible in the reverse direction, that is from JBS AG2 to JBS AG1. Let's uh, look at um, um, a live um, a server where you have um, availability group configured and let's look at the automatic failover. So let's look at uh, this particular availability group, which is JVAG. So let's click on properties here. Yeah. So what we can see here is like uh, there are two server uh, database servers here, JB sub hyphen DR and JB sub hyphen primary. And right now JB sub hyphen primary is your uh, primary replica. And we have synchronous commit uh, configured as the availability mode for each of these replicas. And the failover mode is set to automatic. So now if something happens to this server, JB sub primary, let's consider like uh, uh, the health check uh, detects a failure Failure, or let's consider if the SQL services uh, on the JB sub primary uh, restarts, we should be expecting an uh, automatic failover. So let's uh, refresh this and then look at the availability group one more time JBAG. So JB sub primary is a primary replica. And if we look at the other server, we can see that JB sub is a secondary. So let's look at the uh, availability group dashboard you just need to right click and click on show dashboard 
and if we see here uh, what we can understand is like uh, everything seems to be good so the roles as far as uh, these SQL instances are concerned JB sub hyphen primary is the primary replica and JB sub hyphen DR is the secondary replica and also like uh, there is no data loss failover as far as this failover readiness is concerned and synchronization state is synchronized so what we'll do now is like let's open the configuration manager and we will just restart the sql services and see what happens I'm gonna take time um, maybe like uh, 30 seconds or one minute uh, once the restart happens we will refresh the uh, management studio for each of these uh, SQL server instances are concerned and then we will see if there is any change as far as uh, uh, the replica roles are concerned okay so it is restarted now now let's go back to the SSMS let's refresh each of these servers so previously uh, JB sub primary is the primary replica so what we'll do now let's refresh this and then let's uh, look at the availability group here and if you see here what we can see is like uh, JBAG has become uh, secondary and uh, let's do a refresh one more time okay after we refreshed it what we are able to see is like uh, JB sub DR which was the previous uh, secondary has become a primary now and uh, JB sub primary, which was uh, previously primary, has become a secondary now. So this is how the automatic failover uh, works. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.